Hi, and welcome to the Home Assistant How-To with Bearded Tinker. Today we are going to play with timers. We'll start in a couple of seconds. Before we begin today's episode, I would like to thank all the members who have joined my channel. Thank you very much, it really means a lot. Let's get cracking with today's video. Timer integration simplifies automations based on time durations. What could be the main purpose of a timer? So, for example, if you have a motion detector turning on your whole lights, one way of doing it is to have a trigger based on the motion detector that would, for example, start the light and then you do a counter or wait command in automations to wait specific period of seconds. The problem with this is that what happens if there is another motion detection in the same time where already one is triggered? Here comes the timer. Timer will help you to control the length of time after the last motion detected until the reset of the light or alarm. If you have a light in your hall and you trigger motion with a sensor, you can have light stay on for, let's say, 5 minutes. But if another person then enters hall, wait command from the automation would only wait remaining 30 seconds. If you are using timer, timer would reset on new entry or new trigger of the sensor and it will start to count down again from let's say five minutes that you've set it up. So there are a lot of things that you can trigger with a timer. The other thing could be, let's say, timer in your bathroom. When you go into the bathroom to take a shower, you want to have fans running 10, 15 minutes after the last trigger event, meaning after you have left your bathroom. By using timer, you have more control of the time and the length of events. So to make this more clear, Let's see how I've configured it in my current setup. If we go to automations, let's look at my nightlight. So I have automation that is triggered by the sensor in the living room, living room motion occupancy sensor. And when it triggers to on state, between the times of midnight and six o'clock in the morning, there is an action to turn the stairs lights on for the duration of 4 minutes. After 4 minutes have passed, we then turn stair lights off. This is one way of doing it. The other way, I'll show you now. In order for you to configure timers, you have to go to your configuration YAML file. And inside configuration YAML file, you need to activate integration. This is done by typing timer. Timer. And now you can create individual timers. For example, I have front door open. This timer will be used to start the counter when my front door is open. We have to set up duration. And duration here will be 5 minutes. Required fields for this integration for timer is, of course, the new timer, name itself, and duration. You also have an option to name it. You can give friendly name, so front door open timer. If you want, additional field is also icon. And this is using standard Home Assistant library or standard external library for Home Assistant. This is material design icons. So MDI and let's put here door. Hopefully this will work. Okay, let's create next timer. Next timer will be living room motion. Duration for this timer will be 2 minutes, 0, 0, 0, 2, 0, 0. 
I'll give it a friendly name. Living room motion timer. And for this uh, timer, I will not be using icon. So what have we done so far? We have created two timers. One timer will be counting from five minutes to zero. And I've given it a name front door open timer. And the next timer is a living room motion timer that will be counting two minutes. In order for this integration to be activated, next thing that we have to do is, of course, we have to restart our Home Assistant. For this, let's go back to Home Assistant. Let's go to Server Controls, check Configuration. And let's restart our Home Assistant. As I said, this integration is great because it can help you simplify your current automations or your future automations. As with everything, there are a couple of ways you can do it. You can still use wait timer inside your automation scripts, but by using timers or timer integration, you will be able to more precisely control what's going on, when timers start, when events finish. You can pause them, reset them or stop them. Home Assistant is back. Let's go to Configuration, Automations. In my main setup, all automations inside my Home Assistant are each in the individual file, but we'll create this one using Automations YAML file. Skip. We will create automation that will start the timer when there is a motion in the living room. So this will be a living room motion timer we will select state as we are interested in a state change living room motion occupancy we want this automation to be triggered when the state changes to on on if you want if you are doing this for your main setup you of course can add conditions one of the conditions that you can potentially add is a sun. As you probably do not want this automation to be triggered during the day, if you have a window or light coming in. So you can do this before sunrise and after sunset. That way, the condition that has to be met for this trigger is this one. But for the testing purposes, I will remove this. And last thing that we want to do is we want to do action. And action for this automation is to start the timer. So let's go to services. Timer. Start. And here we have to select what timer we want to use. We have two timers here. A living room timer that we created previously and front door timer we are going to use living room motion timer. And let's save this. And before we continue, of course, what we have to do is we have to go to server controls and reload automations. Let's go to overview, beta. And here I have prepared uh, entities here for the timers. So we have two sensors. One is front door sensor and the other one is the living room occupancy. And here we also have two timers, living room motion timer and front door open timer. And let's try to trigger this motion sensor. As you can see, as soon as the living room motion occupancy sensor was detected, has changed state we have our timer that has started to count down. As you can see now, the sensor has changed to clear, meaning there is no motion detected. The timer is still going on, and if I trigger it once again, it will start from the beginning. This is something that you cannot do if you are using wait command inside your automation. There are a lot of advantages of using timers instead of wait command. One of the things that is great about timer is that you can manipulate it, meaning that you can pause it, restart it or terminate it. 
Let's go to Developer Tools. Let's go to States. Timer. Living Room Motion Timer. As you can see, the state is currently active, meaning that the timer is on the countdown. If we go to Services, what we can do is we can pause the timer. Call Service. Let's check the state. Timer is still active. Let's go to Entities and we can see that it's stopped at 44 seconds left. Let's go back to Developer Tools. Services. We also have possibility to finish the timer or to cancel the timer. Let's use Cancel. Living Room Motion Timer. Call Service. And if we go back and check, we can see that the timer has stopped. All of those states can be visible here. Idle, Active, Paused. If we look at our example of triggering light based on the motion with the timer, first thing that you would also need to do is you would need to add action inside your previous automation where you not just start timer but also use action to start the light or to turn the light on. And to finish everything, when the timer has run out, what you would have to do, you would have to go to configuration, automations, click the plus sign, skip this and create new automation. Let's call it light off on timer end. Trigger would be event. Event type would be timer finished. And here you would need to type in entity ID timer and the name of the timer we used. What this means that we want trigger to happen when the timer finishes. Note that we have finished here, meaning that it was not cancelled or paused. Only after timer finishes, this timer a living room motion. What we want to do is we want to use stairs. And we want to turn off stair lights. Okay, this would be example of timer finish. You can of course create specific events if you want to have, if you want to track the timer paused or timer cancelled, but normally for the motion sensors or humidity sensors or something like that, you would use timer finished as event type. Let's check how automation needs to look in the automations file. This is how my automation currently looks. As I said, one thing that you would have to add here is we would need uh, to call service. Light turn off. Entity ID. Light stairs and now when we have a motion trigger meaning that the binary sensor turns to state on timer would start and also we would have lights sorry turn on okay and for the next automation i create we would need to create a new one Let me copy everything here. We'll call this living room timer finished. Here, as I said, we will be using platform event. Entity ID would be timer finished. We need to remove this. And action for this would be light turn off. So this is an example of the automation if you would create that automation 
directly in a YAML file. Let's go to configuration, server control, let's check the configuration. And we can now reload automations. And if we go now and trigger once again, let's go to beta. We see that we have now living room motion occupancy clear. If we would trigger now, we would here see motion timer starting and also the lights will turn on. And when the timer reaches zero, lights should turn off. Timers can be used in various ways and in various situations. For example, if the humidity goes above some level or if, for example, your particle matter inside your apartment starts increasing or you have increased CO2 or VOC values, you can then trigger timers for the know, air filters or air conditioning to vent your apartment. You can use it in your shower to vent it when the humidity is too high. You can use it on motion sensors, on your door sensors or your window sensors. But you can also use it on other things. For example, I could probably again annoy my kids with a timer when they watch TV for too long with the ability for me to reset the timer. This is it for today's Home Assistant How To with Beardy Thinker. If you did like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any kind of a comment or a question, you can always find me on the Discord. But you can also leave message down in the comment section here. If you still haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified on the future updates. And I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.